Right now, I'm truly up in the air at an altitude of five yards. And it's only the electromagnetic force and a lot of prayer that keeps me hanging here. The magnet, here it is by the way, is only the size of a hockey puck. But it seems, though it's absolutely scary, to be working quite fine. But stop, first things first. Magnets, we all know them. Their properties were studied back in the 13th century. They are used in almost all areas of our lives. Look, even at the metal recycling plant. They're, by the way, usually made of metal too, iron or cobalt. But I'm going to see the man who has unusual magnets, and he calls himself a magnetic punk, by the way. Constantine. Good, Good morning. morning. You've chosen quite a special place for our meeting. Well, yes, a metal recycling plant. By the way, here they use magnets a lot. However, different magnets, not like these ones. What kind of magnets do you have? It's not that they are some mysterious and unusual. The fact is that they are called neodymium magnets. Neodymium is one of the elements of Mendeleev's periodic table, a rare earth metal. Its outer electron shells with electrons in distant orbits are the same as an iron, but they're closer to the nucleus. On the inner shell, there are so-called 4F electrons that interact with the electric field of the nucleus stronger than others, giving neodymium an amazing property in comparison with usual ferrite magnets. The difference is that they are really much more powerful oh. than ferrite ones. Yeah. Here, at a distance, easily it's reacting through a hand. Yeah, listen, it's magical. Let's take a bigger magnet. Just a second. Oh, I can feel this pressure right here. This is the magnetic field. Look at the distance we have. It's still moving. No permanent magnet, except for neodymium, can do this. Despite their modest size, they are sources of a fierce magnetic field, 50 times stronger than one conventional magnet. The aggregation force can be several hundred pounds. Well, now I may be experiencing about 66 pounds pressure. Oh, look, then you barely turn it off. Well, I even... There's a trace left. I can't even believe that this whole force is just the force of interaction of small electrons. Well, gravity has won. But I want to have a real test of gravity. Constantine, so what is in your hands now? Now I have a search magnet in my hand. This is, in fact, one, one of the most powerful permanent magnets that now exist. So how powerful is it? So much that it stands the repulsion force of several orders of magnitude greater than its own weight. Yeah, well, we should test this somehow. That's what we're going to do now. Okay. With your weight. Ah, I seem to understand why I'm wearing a helmet. Check for repulsion. Well... Well, it kind of holds. It's not how you should check. But how? Hunker down. Okay. Put your foot here. Okay. Nice. Are you holding on to it? Well, I think so. Tightly. Well, yes. Great. Lift up. Hey, hey, guys. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> it's not coming off, is it? It's fine. It's definitely not. It's scary that that. <laughs> That, that, that's it. Hey, guys, let me down, guys. It's, it's going to come off right now. It's going to... Ah! Ah! Oh, it's so scary. Guys, that's enough, enough, enough. I bet that the forklift drivers never had such a loud load to work with. Stop it all. Stop it. Well, does it hold in place? Oh, my God, yes, it does. Thank God. Bye. That's what magnets are like. Believe me, to entrust your health to invisible force is really oh, very scary. Let's get her down already. That being said, neodymium has really proved to be invincible. Here, the magnetic levitation in action. Well, yes. Be careful with your legs. And it's me who levitated. Well, yes. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Usually, when people speak about magnetic levitation, they mean the levitation of superconductors. This effect was first observed in 1933. 
At temperatures below minus 189 degrees Fahrenheit, some materials convert into superconductors. Their resistance drops to zero. A current appears on the surface, followed by a magnetic field being outward too. If you place a magnet on top, the field of the superconductor will be contra-directional and compensating. That is, as a result, a real magnet, instead of a superconductor, kind of sees a magnet of the same polarity and exactly the same size as the one causing repulsion, levitation. It seems that everything is not so difficult, but so far people can't fly like birds simply because this effect requires constant maintenance of low temperature and therefore a huge amount of liquid nitrogen or helium. Well, that's all very complicated. This rail freight car weighs 28 tons. Nevertheless, attention please, it soars in the air. Can you imagine? No magic, only science and a magnetic field. Moreover, the field of permanent magnets without nitrogen. How is this possible? You know exactly here. Anatoly Alexandrovich, good morning. Good morning, Sasha. We are glad to see you in our laboratory, where we have a test stand for our devices that will work on the magnetic levitation technology rolling stock. And what is it? In general, what is a magnetic field, magnetic levitation technology? Well, could you take the metal key screw? But please, carefully holding at the tail. I feel something is not right. Well, so? So what? Put it closer, please, here. Oh, terrible. Scared? This is a magnet, isn't it? Yes, this is called a setup. You see, everything is closed. There's nothing here. Moreover, if we measure, then there is no magnetic field here. It's only here. Our experts have learned how to do this. This is our know-how. Look, now a different material. Have you seen it? That's what... It doesn't fall? That's what a magnetic field is and how to use it, including for acceleration and for deceleration and for lifting and for descent. Well, that is, in fact, this plate in general levitates? Yes, that's right. Yet this is is incomplete and moreover static levitation and everything is much more complicated with a dynamic one. This stand is an inverse model of an infinite magnetic road. Inverse because the bed runs here and the stock remains motionless. Inside this cart there is already familiar to us neodymium magnet. The circle is gradually accelerating, and at some point, up, oh, the pulling force becomes smaller than the repulsive force, and dynamic levitation appears. If the model were not screwed in, it would surely soar. The faster the trolley runs, the more this force will be for one simple reason, that the so-called EMF, which is induced here, which is the source of another pull, it will be bigger. EMF, or electromotive force, arises because of Lorentz force, the effect of a magnetic field on a moving charged particle or conductor. Now scientists are experimenting with different materials for the optimal vertical force and are learning how to compensate for the other, horizontal, so that the future train wasn't taken down from the bed. But when everything works in real scale, they say that there will be no competitors to the weightlifting capacity of this transport. The car, let's say, is 100 tons, or 200 tons, or 1,000 tons. I specifically give these figures because the wheel rail can't give these in one unit, and magnetic levitation can. These 28 tons are still a kind of monument to magnetic levitation, immobile, yet it soars. Let us show you how. Here you can clearly see the gap between the magnets. It is approximately one inch. For a year and two months, it hasn't changed even a hundredths of an inch. I mean, this is the second point. The first point is that we've proved that 28 tons can be raised. It's only four magnets with a total area of two square yards that hold this weight in the air. To accelerate the magnetic car, a linear electric motor will be used, though they say a year ago muscle power was enough. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. 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 No. Well, no, unfortunately. No, it doesn't work. Oh, that's a pity. Well, it doesn't move yet. Well, now it doesn't move, but still soars. And it's still amazing. 
If such a car goes, then it'll rather fly low. After all, there is no friction, only frontal resistance. Therefore, 350 miles per hour is not the limit. Ah, meanwhile, nearby ordinary freight cars flange their wheels against the rail slowly, but surely. Even seeing this, people still treated it with caution. And, well, we offered them. Please, you can put your hand in there. Put it in? You're welcome. Well, in fact, so I am a little bit afraid. Well, don't be shy. A year has already passed. Though it's probably like putting your hand into a lion's mouth. Almost like that. Well, here, almost like that, yes. It's an amazing story, the flying freight car. Amazing. That's how, little by little, little by little, and we do the future. Create it. In the future, the creators of this car very much hope it can make a journey from Petersburg to Moscow on a new magnetic levitation road. After all, the one born to fly cannot sit still.